So there's a difference between Buganda and Uganda. What about Luganda? That's the language. Luganda is the language of the kingdom of Buganda. Okay. Uganda is the country where you find Uganda as one of the kingdoms. Okay, okay. It was named Uganda because of Uganda, because the British colonialists fell in love with the kingdom and they collaborated with the kingdom to colonize the rest of the country. Man, Kampala is full of hustle and bustle. I know. I can feel the Niger energy here. All the Nigerians should come to Kampala and ask for me to I'll show you around. Hello wonderful people of Uganda. Oh yes, Arenga is here live and direct here in Kampala. So, uh, right now we are at uh, Soweto was. <laughs> So wait to what? So wait to market. So wait to market. So yeah. I have with me my brother from another mother in person of Miti. Miti Miti. Tell them about Kampala. Kampala. Just tell them, introduce yourself to them. Welcome to the Wait to Market. My name is Miti Miti. Um, a tour guide here in Kampala. And we're on a free walking tour of Kampala with the one and only. A renga. <laughs> <laughs> Okay guys, so uh, here we are, and I'm also here with uh, my friend here, that's John of God, all the way from Chigali, Rwanda. It's Soweto now. Oh yes, we're now in Soweto. How are you, madam? How is business? This place is big. Wow! Yeah, it's a very huge place. Hey guys, uh, this is what uh, the woman brought. This is beans. This is a uh, pumpkin. Pumpkin. This is what? Yam. This is sweet potato. Matoke, bro. Matoke. <laughs> so what is this? Sweet potato. Sweet potato. And this is what? Rice. This is what? Osho. This is what? Cassava. Cassava. So guys, you can see you have a lot here. <laughs> but funny enough, it's spoon that you use. Is this spoon that I will take to school place too? I don't mind, I prefer spoon. To eat what I can, and uh, this Rwandan is still eating. Yeah, enjoying. you are enjoying it. It's a little bit similar to what you people eat over there. Hmm? The Almost the same. Oh, he said it's the same. So I'm the only alien here. I don't know that. But at the same time, I was able to finish my own meal before you. So guys, uh, we're just leaving the the Soweto uh, market where we head. So we are in still in the, in the window market. So we are still here. So if you still remember, we came here and the, the path where we went to happened to be a very different path. So this is another area where you have a food stuff and all the rest. Panicking a lot because they're not used to this. Kind yeah, we are used to it. I am used to it, except uh, this man from Rwanda. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so guys. So guys, see the area view of uh, the Owino market. Wow. Over there is the mall, city mall. And you see, you see that tower? That tower there, okay. That mosque? Yeah. It was funded by Kano Mama El Gaddafi oh, from Libya. From Libya, oh wow. It's the third biggest mosque in Africa. Wow. And when you go on top of that tower, you can have like an aerial view of the whole of Kampala. Seriously? 360 aerial view of the whole of Kampala. Wow. So to That's go up that mosque, you pay some money and they give you some Muslim clothes and stuff to pay respect to the mosque and to also to maintain the mosque, they charge for that and for the tour guide. Kampala, then it will be easy for him to locate us. Yeah. We are just rotating around the same place. Did I tell you that I can easily hear a name and I know this is Nigeria? Uh, yeah, because they are very close to you people. There are many here. Okay. And you've happy. watched many Nollywood movies. Yeah. Like, I Adewale, Adekunle. Adewale, Adekunle, that's Yoruba. <laughs> yeah. The tribe, Yoruba. Yeah. Ijoma. Ijoma is what tribe? Ijoma, that's Ibo. If I mean, or oh, something like that. If I mean, that's the Yoruba. Biggest wholesale trading corridor in Kampala. This is where the traders come to buy products at wholesale to take them to retail shops. It's the biggest corridor and it's literally called Corridor in Uganda, which translates to Chikubo. When you're in Kampala, this is one of the places you should visit. It's very crowded and it has a lot of cheap products that you would otherwise find like very expensively in like the normal supermarket so if you're looking for goods in bulk or you just want to get a single item but a, at a very good wholesale price you come to this crowded place the corridor yeah <laughs> Kampala! Yeah! Oh man! This is the real Kampala. This is where you find the biggest percentage of the employees in Kampala. You have a lot of people here who come from other suburbs of Kampala and enter the city to work for the day and then they get out of Kampala in the evening and they come back the next day. So the population we have in Kampala is not made up of only residents but also people like these who are just coming from outside Kampala to Kampala to work every day you have also those that stay in the city but a big percentage of them just come to the city to work and get out oh. is, that, is that the old park? yeah that's the old park we shall have a better view of it we shall go to that 
Kampala Road. Road, yeah. And for me, it's a symbolic, uh, it's a symbolic division between the rich and the poor, or between uptown and downtown. Uptown and downtown. Yeah. So you notice that as we get close to it, the chaos is reducing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when we cross it and go up, the chaos will disappear. Wow. So it's the symbolic separation between uptown and downtown. Once you cross it and come here, you're downtown. Once you go up, you're uptown. A lot of smart traders get goods cheaply from downtown, cross them up to uptown, to sell. and sell them at a dollar rate. At a dollar rate, yeah, yeah. Plot one Kampala. Yeah, it's the constitutional square. It is where people can come and protest peacefully. Oh, okay, okay. Without being arrested. Okay, this square. Yeah, this. Uh, but like I said, a lot of laws don't work, so they will obviously arrest you. <laughs> they say that they will not arrest you, but they will arrest you. It's more or less like a freedom park. Exactly. It's supposed to be a freedom park. We have something like that also in Lagos. Uh, but you see, they're not even allowing people to enter inside. Oh, wow. Yet it's supposed to be a public space. I can see some military men there. Yeah. You know, food. Yeah. This is uptown. Mm -hmm. what is this? <laughs> the Lord is trying to speak to me. Oh yes, yeah, so listen to the Lord. <laughs> and listen to the word of God. Why did I find this random thing here? Maybe it's not random. Okay, so I wanted us to go further. There you go. I did us to go further down there. There is a statue that talks about the history of the name Kampala. But if you are not up for the walk, we can start from here and go towards uh, Volcano Express. Okay. Yeah. Read that message. I don't know why it is there, but it's there for a reason. I read it. Maybe, maybe God put it there for you. <laughs> So this statue is the statue of the first president of Uganda. Um, I will tell you the story of our independence when we go to the independence monument. But right now, this is the first president of Uganda. First president of Uganda! He was the king of Buganda. Oh, okay. So there's a difference between Buganda and Uganda. What about Luganda? That's the language. Luganda is the language of the kingdom of Buganda. Okay. Uganda is the country where you find Buganda as one of the kingdoms. Okay, okay. It was named Uganda because of Buganda, because the British colonialists fell in love with the kingdom and they collaborated with the kingdom to colonize the rest of the country. So that is why Uganda is so similar to Uganda. And most people mistake everyone in Uganda to be from the Uganda kingdom and to be speaking Uganda. But that's not the truth. We have over 50 tribes and 50 languages, over 50 tribes. And yeah, 
our culture is diverse. We don't have one homogeneous tribe and one language. We don't even have a national language. We only have an official language. Because Luganda would have been our national language, but other tribes will not allow because they feel like it's unfair because the people from Uganda are just a small part of all the people of Uganda. So yeah. Wow. This is uh, Sir Edward William Frederick David Walugembe Luangula Mutebi Mutesa. He's the first president of Uganda and after him who, who, who took over um after after him in presidency or as a king because he was a king of Buganda, he was a king of Uganda but he's dressed as if a military man exactly I'm going to tell you the history of our independence and I will talk about how colonialism is also affecting the smallest details of our culture and how it started with the naming of our king, yeah? But we have to first go to the independence monument. Okay. Yeah, this guy looks like Mzungu. <laughs> he, has a, he has a white people nose and he's wearing like... Pointed nose. Yeah. But I think it's because the sculptor was either from Europe or was fascinated by Eurocentric facial features. Okay, no problem. <laughs> there is this, there is that statue. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, That's it, yeah. Let's get closer and we do the comparison. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, from what I can see, that's from my own layman perspective uh, view. Yeah. I think um, I can see a leg. Being turned with rope, mm -hmm. and then uh, somehow at the end, he mm -hmm. uh, was uh, victoriously, yeah. uh, you know, he victoriously escaped from the rope, from the bondage. Yeah. From the bondage. Yeah. Did I get it right? Yeah, the lady did not escape, but the newborn baby. Okay. It's free. Oh yeah, my yeah. god. So I was going to explain the same way. <laughs> uh, ah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> because the mother is sad but the ki yeah. kid is happy. The kid is happy because, so the kid is the new Uganda. Oh, oh my god. Being independent. Wow. Kind of, and these are the struggles of independence like pulling out the new Uganda as an independent country. This is symbolic of our independence, but if you ask me, I don't think that we are really independent. Um, <laughs> How do you mean? On 9th October... But you guys are independent, you can do whatever you like here. Yeah, I know. On the surface, this is what it looks like, but we are not independent at all, and I will explain why. But uh, this is the symbol of our independence. Every 9th of October, Every 9th of October we are like celebrating independence and for me every 9th of October I'm explaining to everyone why we are not independent. Mm. Yeah. So let's go over there and I can tell you the story of independence. So this was the king of Buganda by the time we got independence he is the one that was made the president he is called King Mutesa Edward and this this one is called Milton Obote he's the one that was made prime minister when we got independence now what you have to understand about the colonial system of governance or the system of governance in the UK the Prime Minister has more responsibilities than the President which gives the Prime Minister more practical powers than the President but you should also remember that as the as a supreme cultural king no one can be above you and the British knew this very well they knew that 
when he is made the president, the prime minister will be above him and therefore there will be a conflict between his cultural powers and his uh, government powers, the ones that are given by the state. And to cut the long story short, eventually this guy, who was the prime minister, he invented, he invented this guy's uh, palace and he also abolished all kingdoms from Uganda because he felt like his powers as prime minister were undermined by the powers of the cultural, oh, leaders. The cultural leaders. And so Mutesa, who was the king, flew to the UK for exile and fast forward to when Obote also died in the recent 2000s when his body was brought back to Uganda the Baganda people would not accept his body to pass through Buganda to go to northern Uganda where he was buried because there's still so much tribal tension between the Acholi people in northern Uganda where Obote comes from and the Baganda people where Mutesa comes from in the central because Obote abolished kingdoms and it's of recent in 1986 when Museveni took over power that the kingdoms were restored but even now the kingdoms don't have as much power as they used to have during this time but now we're talking about independence like I don't think that we're independent because everything that we're still doing be it politically or in our education system in our social culture way of life we are still living in the blueprint of the colonizers the curriculum we have in our education it is all a British curriculum we're only taught how to memorize things we're only taught about how white people came and saved Africa and how they introduced the religion and how they introduced God to us we're only taught that we were cannibals and that we were rescued by the white man and we are not really learning things to innovate and to be creative. And, and this is one of the ways I say that we are not uh, free. We are still enslaved with the way we are educated. And it's even worse because right now we have the image of independence. So, we, so a few of the people that are talking about it cannot be listened to because we have the symbols, the physical symbols of independence. But we are not independent, even economically, we have so much debt with these former colonizers. This is one of the destinations that any person who is visiting Kampala should visit because it has a lot of handmade craft from local artists from all over Uganda and suburbs of Kampala. And when you buy from this market, you are supporting a local artist and therefore you're supporting the local economy. So instead of going to bougie places to buy products that have been imported to Uganda, it's better that you come to a local craft market like this one and you support the local artists. So we're going to go in and check it out. Hello, how are you? I'm telling them they should call you and sell to you stuff. This looks like um, clothes from the, the northern part of uh, Nigeria. Yeah. yeah, the houses. Yeah. They're called houses. Yeah, yeah. The houses. The Fulanis. Ah, okay. The Fulanis. It's more or less. It's Charlie the way they. The material. A lot of West African clothing has been assimilated into East Africa. Don't worry, we, we just want people to come and uh, know more about your place. Just briefly. Okay, guys, so um, just like uh, we have told you that if you come to uh, Uganda, make sure you visit uh, the Art Crafts uh, Center, 
which is in uh, Kampala. So when you get here, you have a lot to, to a lot of stuff to buy here. Look at it. See, wow. These are beautiful artifacts. And uh, look at all the fabrics. Look at all the fabrics. Wow. Are you guys convinced that Africa is blessed? Okay, yo, yeah. Wow. Look at the spoons. Salad spoons. Oh, I love this. I love these bags. They are locally made. Wow. Handmade bags. Interesting. So guys, if you by any chance visit uh, Uganda, tell them to bring you down to Kampala Art Craft Craft Village. Interesting. This is lovely. And I look at all the footwear. So guys, we can't show you everything, but just come down to this place and I'm sure they will give you uh, at, a, at wonderful prices. Yes. So just come and uh, check them out. Oh wow, yeah. Face mask. Made from wood. Yeah. These are earrings. Yes, of course. I think I will do later. These are the fridge magnets. They stick on the fridge. Oh wow. So how much does this one go? It's only fifteen thousand. Wow. Fridge magnets. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Also, they work made from stone. Stone. Yes. Let me see. The soft stones. Soft so stones. Yes, those are costas with different animals. Wow, this is this is nice. Yeah. So what's the cost of this? Uh, only twenty five. Twenty five. Yes. Wow. Yes. And there I have different shops. In also, it's in the valley. Yes. And there is wow. an art gallery there. Interesting. They have these See, guys, this is beautiful. Have you been wow. to Mamba? Mamba, yeah, Thank you. Um, there was also something like this made from banana fibers. Banana fibers? Yes. This is interesting, man. Um, I actually live in that neighborhood. Where Mamba is? Yeah, yeah but that, that wow. one is also. There also this place. Let me show you the different painting. Uh, interesting. What's it called? And these mugs? Uh, those are, no, Where, oh. The mugs are here. Okay. Yeah. These were made from clay. clay. But yeah. anywhere I slept in Kibagawa, Interesting. Was not nice one. Very nice. It was like this a is gate. also stone. It's here. It was like a small gate in Kibagawa. Stone. Oh, wow. Even the chains is made from stone. Yeah, the ghetto. I was in the ghetto. That's this one. Guys, can you see that Africa is really blessed? So please, um, like I said, you know, we've really tore the whole, uh, almost the whole Kampala. So I guess this is going to be the last place we are going to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so guys, just come down to this place and uh, tell them that you saw the video of this place from Arenga TV. it's still TV. big, bro. I know it's still big, but we can't go to everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> honestly. But I really thank you, uh, Mitzi, for uh, finding time to take us around. And uh, yeah, it shows how proud you are of your country, Uganda. Yeah, yeah. I am. Yeah. I am. So that's very nice of you. All the Nigerians should come to Kampala and ask for me to. I'll show you around. I have the you best hear that? tours here. <laughs> do, do you guys hear that? I'll show you the corners no local can ever show you. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the corners that locals don't even know. You're, you're going to be a local within one day. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Can you see that? Can you hear that? Anyway, no problem. <laughs> it is on this note that. Uh, Arenga is going to hand the vlog here, and uh, I can't hand the vlog without saying thank you to my big brother from another mother here, 
in Kampala, Uganda. Respect. In person of Miti. Miti, Respect to say bye bye. TV. Say bye bye to them, please. Um, thank you, Last Nigeria. Word from you. Thank you, Lagos. Thank you, Abuja. Thank you, uh, Msuka. That's the only places I know in Nigeria. Thanks for coming to Kampala. Thanks for checking out our city. We shall be waiting for you to come back and check out our city um, here. Check out Tembea Kampala Walking Tours on Instagram. That is Tembea Kampala Walking Tours. T-E-M-B-E-A Walking Tours. And book any kind of walking tour you want to see. I can suggest some things. You will enjoy Kampala. Thank you. Anyway, on behalf of uh, the Arenga team, I proudly say to you, Asante sana. <laughs> Asante. Asante. So, and I have uh, this uh, Rwanda guy that has been touring the whole place with me yeah. in person of John of God. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. I really appreciate all the little time we have spent together. Thank you very much. And I hope to visit Rwanda again. Yeah, please come. Just watch out for Rwanda vlogs. Yeah. Coming soon. Murakazane is in Rwanda. Ah, Rwanda. Okay, so till I come your way next time with another wonderful and interesting video. Is your G Arenga saying bye bye and then Odabo. Oh,